Hi everyone, um, this is the session on building entity types with the entity operations framework. I'm going to start with an apology. I'm completely sleep deprived and I've spent the last two weeks herring around with a family crisis. So I'm really, really badly prepared. And um, so <laughs> that's, that's the state of things. So yeah, if I miss things, um, shout or ask questions at the end and I'll do my best. So apologies in advance if this kind of meanders and I flake out a bit. So um, entities are the real big thing that came along in Drupal 7 um, and a lot of people sort of, I've, I've, I've been asked at previous things, why, why use entities, why not just do everything with nodes? Okay, you promised you, you'd laugh at this. You promised you'd laugh. <laughs> Thanks. Um, so <laughs> <laughs> why use custom entities? Why not just do everything in nodes? You can control your storage um, rather than just rely on everything being in the node table, which may have implications for performance because you can segregate different entities into different tables. You can control your access. Nodes really are meant for public stuff. If you want to do something that isn't meant to be visible to the public, you then spend a lot of time trying to undo what nodes are trying to do or trying to work with a node access system which anyone here like anyone here feel they understand the, the node access system for private nodes yeah it's, it's good if you get a contrib module that just works with it, it's like great okay organic groups yes but if you want to kind of make it do stuff yourself, no um, you can control workflow again nodes have this system, they're published they're not published there's the really good workbench module that lets you do... Um, come in, I've only just started. There's a really good workbench module that lets you do that. But it's still, it's all workflows that are geared towards people create content, they publish content, they unpublish content, they're done. If you've got a custom thing where you have all sorts of bizarre requirements, for example, I'm, I'm eating my own dog food with Entity Operations. I've, I've used it for my... Um, I built myself an invoice tracking system a while back, and I wanted to be able to say, is this, you know, this invoice issued, paid custom workflow. You can control the UI. That's, again, if you're using nodes, you've got the node UI. If you build your own thing, you can build your own thing. However, building a custom entity UI involves a fair few steps. Um, is everyone familiar with the entity API module? Reasonably. Is everyone familiar here with, with building custom entities? Am I going too fast? Am I going too fast? <laughs> okay, so if you want to, so you define your custom entity, you define um, the table in your hook schema, you define the custom entity type in hook entity info, which is not at all on this slide, sorry. Um, yeah, I, this, this, is, this is the slide from, these are the slides from last year. I meant to go through these and, and, and improve them based on feedback from last year, and, and yeah, time's got ahead of me. Um, so, defining your custom entity type is fairly simple. Then building a UI for that is a sequence of reasonably doable steps, but they're fairly repetitive as soon as you start adding more than one entity type. And this is what I was faced with on, on the project about a year and a half ago, that for your custom entity type, you need your, your hook menu for your parts to view and edit and delete and, um, you know, confabulate, book, issue, any kind of thing you want to do with your entity that you want to have some kind of page for, so anything else. You need to create your edit forms. Um, even if you're using the Entity API, you still need to actually create your form callback, your form submission callback, your, um, uh, your form validation callback. Those last two in the other order. Um, you need to define a URI callback with the Entity system. Even if it's just to say, my foobar entity always lives at foobar slash the ID. You need every entity, you need a URI callback. And you need an access callback. Um, and if you're building a lot of custom entities, but I'm just realised the microphone's here and I'm wandering around. Can everyone hear me okay? Right, great. Um, and you need an access callback. And you need this repeating every time for each custom entity. So your hook menu, if you're just doing it all in one module, will balloon into all these piles. Or if you've got several modules, you keep copying, pasting, find and replace, etc., etc., etc. And so I came to this with a system where I needed at least... I think at the time, three custom entity types, and since then it's ballooned to about six, and I thought, sod this for a game of soldiers. Um, so part one of the entity operations UI, we get rid of the menu and all this stuff, we get rid of the URI callback, because if 
If you're just going to say my entities live at foobar slash the ID and any stuff I do on them is foobar slash ID slash edit, view, delete, you know, de discombobulate or whatever, then you can just say that, that's where they live. All this should follow from that. And you just need the edit forms and the access callback. You can actually take it one further and you can get rid of the edit forms. If your entity type is just has a title and, or even not a title at all, and then some, oh, actually does it need a title? Sorry, flaky now. If you're just basically using field API to stick fields onto your custom entity type, I, why, why do you need to define a form callback that's just gonna say field attached form, do stuff? So it's down to just the access callback and of course hook schema and hook entity info and the, the custom hook you need with this. So, um, it's not the slide I was expecting. Um, so, I think I was maybe meant to switch over at this point. So that's my test entity. The entity operations module is now, um, it's now got pretty good test coverage. And as part of that, there's a couple of test modules that define test entity types that you can look at and pick apart. Um, so here I've got a test entity type, uh, I've got an absolute slew of tabs along it. Most of these are just silly. Um, so I've got an edit tab, delete, and then I've got a stupid operation that will just set the title to red. Like that. Um, and each of these operations is provided by a handler class. And then to stick them all together, you've got an info hook that says, this is my foobar entity type. I'd like all these operations using these handlers, please. And it's, that looks like this. Um, apologies if that's too wordy for this early in the morning, and it's just after breakfast. Um, someone did file an issue on, on my issue queue the other week saying, is there any way to make this a bit less repetitive and wordy? And um, he's got a point, I think. Um, but basically, you just say, that's the subpath that lives at slash edit. So entity ID slash edit, use this handler. Add, use that handler. Delete. And so if I want to add the set owner operation, which is just another one that comes with the module, I can go set owner. Uh, sorry, I was whistling really bad with a microphone. It probably is. And hopefully, unless I've done something stupid, I probably need to tell it to give a menu tab. So that's just tell, saying it to expose it as a tab. And unless I've made something stupid like a PHP typo, which could happen, um, clear my caches. And nothing's happened. Um, yeah, I've no idea what that is. Um, I could be in the wrong test entity because I've got two. Uh, right, moving on. Uh, hmm. Do you think that would work? Sorry, I'm not awake enough to figure out what I've done wrong. Um, it should work. So, out of the box, the module comes with the basic CRUD operation handlers, view, add, edit, delete. There's actually two flavors of, of added edit. If you're, you're already using Entity API and you've already got your form, you can just use the ones that use your Entity form. So if you do need to have a form that does custom gubbins, use those. And if you want ones that just whip up a form for you automatically, those are available as well. So that's what I said earlier on about you can just cut your, your, your form builders entirely. There's developer operations like uh, your devel output. You know, like devel module gives you the, the tab on nodes, nodes with develop the, the full breakdown of what's inside it. Um, there's also who works with entity NPI metadata wrappers. Uh, have you ever found that you can't find the property you're meant to be accessing and it just crashes on you all the time? Or is it just me that's rubbish at it? It could be just me. Anyway, there's a tab that just shows you every single property and what the value is so you know what you're dealing with, and tokens as well. And then there's contrib um, integration. So you may have noticed 
on here, there's this nodes list, which I think is going to do bugger all because it needs nodes to point back to it. That's just a view. Who, who's used the EVA module that lets you stick a view on a node or any entity as a field? This is exactly the same as EVA, except you build your view display and it appears as a tab on, on your entity type. So you can, for example, here, um, I think this is because I, I was testing out a system, a new thing I've written to generate arbitrary entities, and so I wiped all the ones I had and then generated some more. Um, but yeah, if I had some nodes of a reference field that were pointing to this one, this view would list them. So you can just say, I want a new tab that says, list all the what's-its that point to this, or even, you know, any kind of a view. And there's organic groups management um, tab as well, if your custom entity type is a group, which was one of the things that I did on, on my project. We had custom entity types that were groups, and so I needed to hook into the, the group management for organic groups, so you can then say, you know, manage the members, yada, yada, yada. Now, you saw when I, um, doing that failed attempt at adding a new tab with the, the set owner operation that you can just say, okay, this operation wants to be shown as a tab. However, it doesn't stop there. Um, if you ever see a view of entities or nodes with links at the end of them that say edit, delete, you can um, do those with all your tabs. So... Um, if I had an oper the, the publish operation here, for instance, that lets me publish, and then there's also a corresponding unpublish one. And note, they only appear when they're relevant because the handler has an access method that says, does it make sense to show this at this point? And if the entity's published already, it doesn't make sense to show the published entity. So access is denied purely on a logistic point of view before it then checks user access. Um, so if you wanted a direct link to that in a view... Um, there's a field handler in views that lets you in your list of entities this is not a, this is not a view, this is entity API, but you've got edit, delete you could, if you made a view of your entities you could then have a publish, unpublish and that's exposed, so that's basically these URL paths that are exposed to views um, and the ones that are action-ish as you can see you've got things like main the, the, the act, that's just the view output and edit um, they're just pages or forms, the ones that are, sort of, that are defined as actions, like the, the, the dummy red, blue, green ones, and unpublish and set owner if it appeared, they're exposed to VBO. Does everyone know what VBO is? Views bulk operations. So if you have your list of entities and you want to make all the titles red, I don't know why, um, or set the owner on all of them, or whatever custom machinery you have on your entities, like you want to assign them to a user or book them or mark them as processed or anything like that, you can, that, that, that is integrated to VBO for free. Um, I can't remember if these are exposed to VBO here. I think I did write a test for VBO. I seem to remember writing a test for the VBO integration, or did I? Um, and the really cool bit when, was when I, I needed to integrate this into services and um, this is the bit I like the most. They're exposed as services actions. Who uses services module? You know how services has got the basic CRUD things on entities, so create, update, all that, and then it's got things called targeted actions on a particular resource. So the, it looks like you do, um, you do a post to node slash one slash delete or something like that. You know, that's a terrible example. Slash publish. You do a post to that and it publishes it or unpublishes it. Um, so all of these, red, green, blue, unpublish, publish, set owner, they're automatically exposed as, as services targeted, um, targeted actions. So how do you define operations? You use hook entity info for some basics about the entity type. Um, there's a few extra keys that, that this module makes use of in that, and then there's a separate hook to actually list, of you, list your operations, which I showed earlier. Um, so I'll just briefly show that again. Um, and
I think that's all. That's the only extra bit we have now. Um, it went, this, has got, this went through several iterations before I, I made a stable release, and at one point a lot of stuff was in Entity Info, and then I realized that hook Entity Info data is loaded on pretty much every Drupal page load, and so it was just chucking, basically just chucking an awful load more data that's, that's going to be loaded into memory every single page load. So that's why I ended up making a second hook, because that second hook is only needed when you're clearing caches, pretty much. Um, so that's basically just saying the base path of my entity is entity operations test. test. It then assumes that your entities live at that slash the entity ID and that your tabs live at slash entity ID slash whatever. And this means, among other things, that you don't need the URI callback. You can use the URI callback helper in the module. You can just say, use that one. And... <coughs> that one just figures out what, what entity you're looking at and, and does the job. So you save yourself a, a callback that is pointless in most cases. Um, and then you've got the hook entity info, which, as I showed earlier, is just the list of operations, the handler, and, and where they come out. So that comes out as a menu tab, and it's exposed as a views field. I thought I had some VBO ones as well, but apparently not. Um, um, so, uh, before I go on to sort of looking at the actual handlers, any questions? Am I going too fast? Okay. Sure. Yeah. The sample code. The sample code. Yeah, yeah, it's inside the module because it's what's used for simple tests. There, there is actually also, they started off with an example module there, which is, it probably still works, but I've, I haven't looked at it lately because when I started writing tests, I realized I needed, I needed test entities with, with dummy stuff on them. So that is kind of obsolete, and your best bet is to go into the, I can't actually, okay, the left part of my screen is cut off. So yeah, if you, doubt, if you this, this, is, this is the latest one from Git, but yeah, inside the test folder, there's your test, simple test there, and there's one that uses the generic operation handlers so it doesn't have its own form builder. It just relies on the handlers to provide the form, and one that actually does build its form. <coughs> so it must do VBO because they've got, uh, I've, I've got a default view for testing that as well, and I thought I put some VBO stuff in there. But anyway, yes, that's all, that's all in there, all the test stuff in there um, that you can try out and break and things like that. Um, so, um, the idea of this, basically, to recap, is that you, if you do need custom entities, you can hit the ground running without having to build all the faffy little UI that's really horribly repetitive. Um, and then going beyond that, the whole purpose of you wanting custom entities in the first place is probably that you want to do custom stuff with them. Um, and this is where you can build your own custom handlers to do whatever you like. So I mentioned in passing earlier that... Um, I, I did myself a thing for tracking my own invoices with clients. And so I just built two handlers, one that's um, issue and one that's paid. And um, I don't even have them with me, unfortunately. They're in my, my home system. But anyway, so a page... Um, da, 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 da. So yeah, um, operation handlers, the basic type is just one that outputs um, stuff. It's a page handler. So it doesn't have a form or anything like that. And there's only three methods you need on that. There's the info and there's the strings, which... Yeah, if I ever do a 2.x, I might merge them together. And then there's the page method, which I think um, Rob Mumford convinced me to change to build, but I think page is backwards compatible. Sorry, I meant to update this. Um, and I don't have a good example of that. <laughs> um, simple action operation handler, again, needs info and strings, and then an execute. So I'll show you the, the red and what the red and the, um, the green ones look like. Except they're not in here, they're in the test. Um, so yeah, this is the one that changes the title of an entity to red, which is humongously useful. Um, that's basic operation. I think that's for admin UI. And that's the strings that you need in the actual UI. So you can customize the, the, tab, the title the tab shows, the title that the page shows, the button label, the confirm question, are you sure, yada, 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 and then the submit message. All the form machinery is handled by the parent class. So you just customize those bits. There's no point in repeating the, uh, a form. And then the execute sets the title to red, saves the entity. That's it. 
and blue is exactly the same. Um, if you want something that's slightly, sim slightly more complicated that needs some kind of a form for input from the user, then you, you do need to override the form bit. But um, again, you don't actually need to build the majority of the form. Um, the reason for this was actually that when I started integrating this with um, VBO, I realized that if you put something of yours into VBO, VBO is doing loads of stuff for you, like, like, um, because VBO works in bulk. So it doesn't have a submit button. It has a, I can't remember what, but anyway, there, there's, there's reasons I had to split this apart. And so the set owner form, which unfortunately you can't see because I've done something wrong and I can't figure it out, um, just has, ignore that bit, um, just has the text field for the owner with an autocomplete and nothing else. So if I had managed to get this to work, I'm just going to try clearing cache again. <laughs> It might, it might, it might not. I might be on the wrong... Ah! Hey. Yay! <laughs> so, so the form in the code only has that one element, the text field for the owner. However, this is appearing, and this is appearing, and this is appearing, and that's because of the parent class that's doing that for you. And the parent class has, it knows that you're in a tab at the moment, and that therefore this is relevant, and this is relevant, and this is relevant. If this was showing in a VBO form, again, the parent class would go, oh, right, you're in a VBO form. Don't show this because VBO has its own confirmation message that we can't take away. Don't show these because VBO at the cancel button just takes you back to the end of these, and that's stupid. And don't show this, thanks, because, again, VBO has its own button. So it knows what to do. And, and, and the actual stuff is not in form submit, it's in execute. The reason for that is because services doesn't use a form. It's all programmatic. And so you have this extra method here where you are required to do whatever you want with the form state values to get your data. Oops, this has gone too far now. Um, <coughs> That's just pulling the user ID out from the username that was put in the form. Build a parameters array, return it, and then the execute operation just expects the parameter you put in there. And that means that when you um, expose this to services, the form part's irrelevant, and the services action takes the UID parameter. Does that all make, have I explained all that properly? Not, okay, brilliant. Um, Oh, that's finished. Okay. Um, how are we doing for time? Um, questions? Yes? Have you done anything around um, NC access and like having a system for doing all that stuff? Or is it just really the... It, um, it, you, oh, good question. It uses um, the... So Entity API has an access system where there's a single entry point entity access and entity API out of the box expects that you're, you pass an op parameter which is create, update, view, delete. And it passes that onto the access callback that is defined in your hook entity info. However, entity API's entity access just passes on the op value. It doesn't check it, it doesn't care about it, it just hands it over to the access callback. Therefore, you can make up more ops and pass them on. So that's what this does. Each handler, um, each handler class defines what the, the op value is going to be, the access verb. And so for this, you could invent your own op that's called set author. And then there's a helper in entity operations that looks at all the operations you've got defined, gets the access verb from them, and then um, you can call that in your module's hook permission and you get an array of permissions. So with this, if I go to the permissions page, we should... Uh, oh, no, except I haven't done permissions on the test modules yet. Oops. Um, <laughs> no, but you, normally you would see that... You, you would be able to see in your permissions page it would have set owner on entity type foobar... Um, make red on entity type foobar. Yeah, well, it's a bit wor worded a bit awkwardly because it builds it up. But yeah, um, so you'd still have to implement hook permission yourself, 
which makes sense anyway because that way it shows up in the correct segment of this. By the way, I'm using, if this looks unfamiliar because of these, I'm using a module called uh, Fast Permissions Access FPA, which is really nice. Um, there's a little, little tabs and filter there. So, yeah, it, it does that. You, you'd, you'd need to implement hook permission, but there's a helper that you can call inside your hook permission that just gives, every, gives you everything you want. So what, you end, what I end up doing is using that helper and then also adding a permission called uh, administer foobar entities. How, how often do you see this used in the wild? Um, not hugely, uh, which is why I'm doing this presentation. <laughs> um, 127 sites using it uh, and 1,452 downloads. So it's not hugely used. Yes? Could you chain things together? So, I mean, quite often uh, you have code that's made, made of two parts. Okay. Yes. And in this, in this instance, you've got a basically a single entity, but really often you want to operate on more than one thing. Mm. To me, the obvious way is to chain one form onto the next one. That's very interesting. I have got this to work with multi-step because we had an operation we needed where users needed to look something up. This is, this is a module I haven't released. Example, yeah. 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 Well, it's, it's not chain them. It's a, it's a module that I haven't released yet, but plan to, where you have a, an SDNT type that's, um, that's called a draft, and when you approve it, which is an operation, it then scurries off and creates one or possibly more entities of lots of different types, because the idea was we needed users to be able to dump data in, and then another user with more authority approves that data and then that creates about three different entities of different types based on just the single initial draft. Yep. And so for the approval step, they needed to be able to look up and that's a multi-step form. It does, it does work. There's a little bit of cleaning up I want to do because um, the multi-step, uh, it works within a multiple operations, uh, a form that contains multiple operations, which is the, something I haven't men yet mentioned because that's new. Um, but there are issues around um, if you've got required fields and you're only obviously executing one part of the form and I need to get my head around the limit validation errors property on form API. Um, a multi-step that goes from one entity type operation to another entity type operation, I've no idea. It sounds like you might be doing some fun things with form API, but um, let me know how you get on. <laughs> it, yeah, multi-step works for a single one where, where you just get a look up and then it, it, you're back at the same form and doing something else with it. Did you mention multi-operations Yes, I don't think I've got something I can show, but... Um, oh, maybe I have. This was for a module that I have released called Human Q Worker because we realised that this draft approval system needed to be done by lots of people simultaneously and we wanted to not have collisions. And so initially I was mucking about with just trying to claim things, and I thought, sod it, I'm just going to use um, Q, Drupal Q API, except Drupal Q API is meant for cron workers, the automatic processes, whereas here we have human beings. Um, do I have a demo of this? I can't remember. Um, hunt me down later, and I'll see if I've got a demo on this. But basically, um, I can probably... <coughs> I meant to, I was, I probably do actually because I was meaning to record, um, that's human queue worker. It basically, you, you define your, your queue and say this is going to be worked by humans and it exposes, maybe I do have it. Uh, ah, excellent. Uh, oh, okay, right. I generate a few more entities. Um, I think I've got the module set up to put them in the queue automatically because I was going to do... Ah, brilliant. Okay, so that's human queue worker. That's a multiple um, operation form. So it's a single form that's showing the operations I said in the queue definition. I oh, said this queue um, uses entities of this type and I want these operations... Um, and then basically multiple concurrent, I'm talking about a completely different module now, multiple concurrent users can go to that URL, each get given an item to work on, and they can all sort of be powering through it. Okay, that's lovely. Yes. I can see lots of places there. Thank you. <laughs> so yeah, I've only, I only released that about a week ago. I've been meaning to do a video on it. Um, 
But yes, uh, have I answered your question or have I gone off topic? Okay, anyone else? Yes? Not yet. Someone filed a feature request a while back in my issue queue saying, does it tie in with ECK? Um, you probably could if you wrote the hooks yourself to, you, or alter hooks to add these in. Um, one thing that's not exactly documented but I've used myself is that you can actually um, add operations to core entities or entities that already have their, their UI. I've, I've added an operation on top of the user entity that we needed for, for some kind of user approval. So in theory, you could do the same trick with ECK. What someone was suggesting is would be, rather than having to write the hook and define things, would be an admin UI where you pick out the operations you want and add them to your ECK entity, which sounds lovely. Uh, I have had no time at all to, to look into that, and it's outside of, of the stuff I'm using it for. Um, so I would, I would very much welcome a patch. <laughs> but yeah, I imagine that you'd have a, an admin UI and you'd store that in a table of the operations, and then when the hook's invoked to gather up all the stuff, you just also consult the table. Um, and then obviously you'd want C tools to make that exportable, yada, yada, yada. But yeah. <laughs> Anyone else? Yes? Uh, no, sorry. Um, uh, it's, prob it's, it's, it's obviously going to be slower than, than using nodes. I did add a patch to add static caching to the access um, the other week, and that speeded it up quite a bit for me. Um, Again, it's not been a huge concern because I'm not using this. I'm personally, I'm using this on a site that's not public facing. It's, it's, it's worker drones. Um, and, you know, you just whip them more if they, if they complain. <laughs> so, no, I'd, I'd very much welcome input on that, actually. Um, yes. Sorry, uh, there was a. Um, yes. Um, it'd be great if the two worked together. Um, I think when I started building this, ECK was still a sort of alpha and a bit... I wasn't really sure about entrusting something that was the, the deeply critical part of it to that, because it was... I, I, I did evaluate it and try it, and, um, and then I also ended up thinking, actually, I, don't, I, don't, I want all this sort of in code rather than in the database, because it was all mission-critical stuff. Um, <clears throat> So it may, in some ways, it's an alternative to ECK. In some ways, the two could work together. Um, I haven't had a look at ECK in about a year, I'm afraid. So sorry. Yes, it's it's aimed at it's it's aimed at dev definitely. Yes, absolutely. This this isn't for site builders. Sorry, site builders. We love you, but <laughs> yes. No, not yet. Um, patch. <laughs> um, I, I've no idea what's required for integrating with Path Auto, but... Um, An amount of stuff is a bit of a hassle. Right. Because if you've got this uh, API-ish sort of module which does most of the stuff for you, most of the work for you, then it would be really nice to get... Yeah, well. yeah, definitely. It's, it's just not, it's not been one of my requirements at all, but yeah. um, so no. Um, how are we for time? Still so got ten minutes. Oh. Maybe tap dancing or something. Yeah. <laughs> I just lie down and sleep. <laughs> yes. How's the Drupal eight call going? The Drupal eight call. Ah, God. Every every sort of six months, I try and get my head around Drupal eight, and the first couple of times, I ran away screaming. <laughs> And then last sort of August, I got a certain distance and then realized that things were still changing all the time and, and didn't run away screaming, but, but sort of thought, okay, I'll leave that for now. And, and since then, the real life's got in the way. So I don't know. I know um, there's a guy, uh, his Drupal nick is Zano with an X, um, who is doing an entity operations hook on Drupal 8. But it looks... It looks um, it's just, I think, about defining the paths that exist, and it's not about actually providing reusable stuff. Because the thing about these is they're re Did I say these are all re reusable across all your entity types? So, so your, your 
you know, the set author one is completely generic for every entity. Um, I think that was kind of implicit in the whole talk, really, wasn't it? Um, so, yeah, it, basically what I'm trying to say is it looks like there's space for this in, in Drupal 8 because core isn't, isn't doing something like this. It's doing something, but it's, it's not doing the... He's not here, is he? No? Okay. Um, but it's, it's doing something, but it's, it's one of those things where there, there, there isn't enough time for core to kind of implement all this. And, and so, uh, but I haven't started looking at a D8 port of this one yet. I started looking at a flag, and that was hard enough. And so, but I expect um, probably in the next year I'll start looking at D8 for this, unless someone beats me to it, which will be lovely. Okay. Um, right, tap dancing. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what are the things that you'd like to extend to? Because you, I mean, you've got a long list of, of, of functionality, and there's obviously other things that you can do. Um, well, where, where do you think trades are? Ooh, wow. Tough crowd. Uh, <laughs> no, no, that's a good question. Um, well, someone mentioned performance, and there is a performance hit in that for each of these tabs, you have to go, okay, what's my operation? Instantiate the handler, see what the handler has to say about access. Um, I suspect, actually, on my own site, the real performance hit is the access itself, because each of my custom entities has an access callback and that access callback invokes its own hook for various other modules to say things because there's organic groups integration, so I need to implement that hook on behalf of organic groups and go, oh, yeah, is this a group? And I suspect that's actually where the performance hit is for me, at least. Um, so, yeah, I, I'd, I'd welcome input from greater minds than mine about, about yeah, streamlining it a bit. And I think... It very much grew organically, and that I started off thinking, let's just build, and let's just have something that makes building a UI less painful and repetitive. And then I realised, oh wait, I could I could have a view tab. That's quite neat. And then I realised, oh wait, I could expose each of these in a in a view. Actually, I'll demonstrate that if I've got time, uh, since I have got time. Um, oh, I don't have. Where's my little views add thing? Um, yeah, and then. I realized it worked with v I could make it work with VBO and services if I have a handler that sort of, rather than just being a form, has a concept of the thing being an action and the form is just a thing to set parameters for the action. Um, so what am I trying to say here? Uh, through the sleep deprivation, I'm trying to say it kind of grew organically and so the reason there's, there's sort of the several different methods for that kind of thing and stuff is that things gradually got added onto it. So one of its failings is that it might benefit from, from a bit of a clean-up at some point. I don't think it's humongously messy. I have tried to clean it up and refactor it as I go along. Um, but yeah, certainly when I come to, to Drupal 8, I'll probably have to reevaluate that. Um, okay. Thanks. Am I using the right entity type? So... There you go, that's the field, that's the field handler. There, it used to be one for each um, tab, but that introduces a circularity between views, hook views data and hook entity info and something else, I don't remember how, but it, it got painful. And so there's just the one, and once you go into that, you say, oh, yeah, I want this to be a link to delete. And that, just, that does mean that then you have to type this out yourself because it doesn't know which one you're going to want and that one. Uh, and if this were a table, it would look better. No, what am I doing? There we go. So this is basically, if you want to make an admin UI for your users of your test entity, and you want a bunch of operations for them to quickly jump to the right tab. So you have your delete, unpublish, recombobulate, whatever all along there. Um, okay. Right, I think I'll, I'll leave it there while I'm ahead. <laughs> okay, thank you very much.